Good morning. Rocky and I are back out in my shop today and uh, I want to talk about, I'll take a little time to talk about a project that I started, uh, gosh, probably almost a year ago and I got started on it, cut a few parts and then um, set it aside and, and basically forgot about it and I found it the other day and I thought, well, you know, I need to finish that thing. So, but anyway, this, this project is a Glassenberry chair. Uh, if you haven't ever heard of a Glastonbury chair, uh, I'm going to provide a link down in the description where you can go on, on the internet and see a picture of it and see, uh, I'm going to try to find the same link where I found this information. Uh, I, uh, a friend of mine actually about two years ago, I guess, or a year and a half ago, something like that, s sent me a picture of this chair and says, yeah, this is really cool to, you, you know, can you make one of these? And I I said, well, I don't know. Let me uh, look around. So I looked around on the internet, look at, try to see if there was any plans or anything. And basically, what I found was this little article on there, and it does describe some of the uh, construction techniques, what thickness uh, material stuff's made out of. And then they had also on there had these kind of really, I don't know if you can see this good on the video or not, but kind of really crude uh, drawings with some dimensions, nothing really. Uh, I mean, you can't really build it off of that, I guess, uh, you know, without a lot of trial and error. So anyway, it kind of presented a challenge to me to try to take what little information I had here and basically spend a lot of time looking at pictures of the chair uh, and trying to uh, model this thing up in 3D. And then the real challenge, challenge was to uh, try to duplicate the detailed carvings that were on this chair. This chair was made by um, a monk named John Arthur back in the 1500s and he uh, he did a lot of uh, very detailed engraving on here so I tried the best I could to, to copy some of that and that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to show you today some of the some of the things that I, that I did here. Anyway a couple of the uh, this is a couple of the uh, side rails for the chair uh, of course, obviously, it's much easier to make these days with a CNC, but it's just a, uh, uh, I guess this is about one uh, one inch thick, maybe one and a quarter thick, I can't recall. And it's got uh, the dado here and then the holes, because this chair is all held together with dowels, as you'll see when you look at the uh, the picture. Got a couple other rails that are for the side rails for the, the chair back, basically the same thing, just, uh, just a little longer. Uh, the legs are pretty simple because all four of the legs, uh, as you can see here, they're they're all identical, and you can see how this kind of goes together. Now you have a stretcher here in the middle for the legs, and then you'll have the dowels that hold the uh, the seat in the back end as well. So the legs uh, were simple enough. I've still got a little bit more detail. I've got to, to route a little line down the side of these legs that's on there. I haven't done that yet. Uh, so I've got four, four legs. Uh, this is basically the chair seat, which I just glued a couple of pieces together and just had to notch the corners and uh, try to make this where it'll fit in those dados of the side rails. So not much to the seat. That was fairly easy to do. And this was one of the parts that was pretty challenging because again, I'm trying to duplicate the uh, carvings that were in the original chair and of course there's no drawings for that obviously so I'm just spending a lot of time looking at the pictures uh, online and trying to you know design this I did this all in my 3d software and then created this pattern got something kind of close to or at least I think it's pretty close to what's in the original chair um, and there's also one another engraving here on the back, uh, the back part of the chair. And this was uh, a real challenge here. You've got these leaves uh, here. So I took, you know, again, I'm looking at just the, the rough drawing or pictures in that, that article and trying to duplicate that. So that rail, that's, I don't have that glued on yet. It's just kind of sitting on there. And then on the front of the chair, you can see it's got uh, Monica's glastomy. I hope I'm saying that right, which means Monk of Glassenberry, 
is according to the uh, paperwork I got, that's the translation for that. The other part that was really challenging is doing these arms. Once I modeled this up and I got the basic profile of these arms, then I had to figure out how I was going to do this carving because as you can see, it is on both sides of this. So what I had to do was to uh, make myself a fixture and I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. But uh, the original chair had these, uh, this was all carved and instead of carving these letters into the wood it was carved where the letters stood out from the wood so I had to uh, set up and mill this little pocket and then make the uh, letters appear raised and these are all Latin sayings uh, this one I believe means uh, let's see this one means may God save him uh, I believe that's the Latin translation. Um, this one, well, uh, let me show you this one. The back of this one shows Johannes Arthas, which is the guy's, the monk's name. It's uh, John Arthur, uh, the, the monk that built this back in the 1500s. And then on the other arm, it's got uh, praise be to God in Latin there. And then on this side, it has uh, peace be with him. So, I believe that's right. Yeah, o o Lord give him peace, I think is what it is. But you can see, I so I did this uh, engraving here. This I did a little textured pattern here. Again, I'm trying to duplicate to make this thing look like the original chair as close as possible. Uh, but this was, this was a little tricky to, to get this because it's got the engraving on both sides. And now I'll show you the fixture that I used to do that. I basically just took a piece of three-quarter plywood and cut out the profile of the arms here and then I have a quarter inch hole that I used to locate my or, or to zero my machine and basically that quarter inch hole is dead in the center of the size of this rectangle. So all my programming was done from the very center of whatever this blank is. I don't know how, whatever size it is, but it's going from the center out. That's how I programmed it. So I could simply clamp down this, this fixture to my uh, table and then I can put the arms inside here like this so they're not going to move around. And then I would engrave both arms on this side and then I could take this back off flip it over, turn the arm over, stick it in there like so, and then I could engrave the other side and that way I could get my patterns to be even on both sides and, and look right. So but anyway, I just want to talk about this chair for a little bit. Like I said, it's something that uh, I kind of run these parts a long time ago actually and, and kind of set them off to the side and then I got covered up with something and I basically forgot about this and uh, I thought I saw him the other day and I thought well I've got to get this out here in the shop and get this completed because I want to get it all stained and, and set it in my house somewhere I guess if it looks good so anyway that's probably going to be it for uh, this video I guess we can call this part one of the Glassenberry chair and uh, thanks for all the new subscribers uh, I appreciate you subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, also, if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please click the, the like so I can tell that, uh, that I'm getting a, a favorable response from, from people that are watching this. Also, if you don't like it, you can, you know, you can click the dislike or really what I prefer is that you leave me a comment or something to uh, let me know what I need to do to try to improve these videos. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this one. Uh, I think this will be a fun project. Also, I guess I should say, once I get this project done and get all my drawings finalized, anybody that wants to make one of these, uh, instead of having to do like I did and figure out all this stuff pretty much from scratch, I'll have some uh, planned drawings available. And also, if anybody that has a CNC that wants to try to make this chair uh, I can even give them the DXF files to import some of this in or uh, if you use vCar Pro like I do, 
uh, I'd be happy to even send you the V card profile so uh, to share those with you so anyway that's going to be it for this video and uh, thanks for watching we'll talk to you next time